come with that formula tonight. Would you clothe us in humility? God, we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of the one who's in charge of it all. And we welcome your presence here. It's in you we live, it's in you we breathe, and it's in you we move and have our very being, God. We are absolutely wasting our time if you don't come and visit with us. So we welcome you. Come on, let me hear you cry out to God. 
Cry out to God like you are desperate, amen. So let me hear you cry out to God. God, we need you. We need you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, we call upon you, Father God. We call upon you, Lord. Lord, we're desperate, God. We're desperate, God. We're desperate for you, God. Oh, God. You know, I walked into, as we get ready for Sunday here, as I walked into the uh, Mayor Baker at that time, Mayor Baker, Rick Baker, the office uh, of the city, opened up a history book that he had put together about the city of St. Pete. And there I learned about some of the discoverers. And, uh, you know, how many of you we, we pretty much have heard that, that the discoverers that initially came to Tampa Bay, they named the, this the Day of the Holy Spirit, right? Well, you know what? I learned something from Mayor Baker. When I opened up that history book, and it said, be, actually before, it was named the Day of the Holy Spirit. It was named the Day of the Cross. And I said, wow. Wow. The Lord spoke and said, you know, if we really want to see the redemptive purposes of being named the Bay of the Holy Spirit, as we know, the Bay of the Holy Spirit gives us all our birth. As we know, the Holy Spirit is one who birthed the church. Amen. And he's been birthing things out of this Tampa Bay area. And if we believe even tonight that God, we want you to do a birthing. We want you to birth the move of God, Lord, that that would that would go across this nation. Amen. And you know what it, you know what it says? If you want that birthing, if you want that birth to take place, we all have to first come to the cross. Amen. And there at the cross, where we die, and as churches, we give up our agendas and we say, God, let your kingdom come and your will be done. Then the breath of God comes and begins to breathe on this.
merciful and compassionate. Yet all the nations clamor for peace, prosperity, and health without you. So we cry tonight, oh God, for our debt. You've given us bounty. For our vain division, we call for unity. For the death of the lives we take of the unborn, the elderly, and those who are in different streets, oh God, from sexual trafficking and slavery throughout the world. Breathe life, God. For the disease that ravages the body, we are called for health. For the delusion, give us eyesight to see you and your intent for us. Disease, 
and the cruelty of rulers. As nations challenge each other in wars, we call on divine edicts that your name may be glorified. Our God, we submit our hearts to you to be your ambassadors sent to the nations. We commit to pray that your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as a picture of heaven. In Jesus' name. you know this is the headlines you're going to have about one minute. We don't want it to just be people leading you in prayer. We want to hear you pray. Yes. Is that all right? Yes. Would you go ahead and do that while our next presenter is coming? Thank you for coming. Dear God and our Heavenly Father, we pray for the land we stand on today, for these United States of America, for the government that you have placed, the leadership that you have given us, for the men and women that have decided to give of their time and their talent to give to others direction and care. Lord, today, dear God and Heavenly Father, as we face these uncertain times in our nation and the world, we ask you, Lord, to dwell among us. We are comforted by the knowledge that you alone are our Savior and Lord and the ultimate master of life. We trust our nation to your loving care. Lord, send your spirit to touch the hearts of our nation's leaders. Give them the wisdom to know what is right and the courage to do that. Oh Lord, we need men and women that will stand against adversity and will understand that in the last analysis they will have to respond to you. So therefore, may their heart be guided by your scripture. May your Holy Spirit direct each mind. Lord, we pray that even in their dreams at night, as they sleep and rest, oh Lord, may your Spirit speak to their ear and their heart. Oh Lord, those that need convictions of heart, bring them to the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we do not ask for a curse upon those that err. Lord, all to the contrary, we ask forgiveness upon them. Oh Lord, and may their heart come to repentance. May they worship you in truth and in life. Father, we pray for our president and his family. Lord, we know how hard it is for him to direct a nation in these times that are so difficult. Be with his children, his grandchildren. We pray for our Vice President 
hands, O Lord, and his wife and family. Lord, we pray for every member of Congress, those that you have placed there. Father, we pray that their hearts may come to you. May they look to you, Lord. Yes. Lord, at this moment, I also pray for those that are standing and are giving that great step to offer their life and their service to you through their government, through our government, like Sister Shayla, Lord, and others. We pray that you may place, O oh Lord, this week and the coming months, the men and women that should be in the places of leadership. Lord, take control. Take control, O oh Lord. And may it be your will above everything. Heavenly Father, we know we cannot stand if it's not with you. Oh, Father, we pray for our local governments, the county, the cities, the Lord, the towns. Heavenly Father, those men and women that will be taking control and authority at every level, our school boards especially. Oh, Heavenly Father, put men and women of righteousness, of conviction, of values, those that will not be ashamed to stand and say they believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And Heavenly Father, give us your light and your truth to guide us in the ways so that we may seek your will in our lives and impact the world around us for your kingdom. For we pray this in the name that is above all names. Even so, in God's only begotten Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to pray with me. That is so sharp. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, as we face these uncertain times in our nation and the world, we ask you, Lord, to dwell among us. We are converted by the knowledge that you alone are our Savior and Lord, and the ultimate master of life. We trust our nation to your loving care, Lord. Send your spirit to touch the hearts of our nation's leaders. Give them the wisdom to know what is right and the courage to do it. Yes, Lord. Give us your light, your truth to guide us in our ways so that we may seek your will in our lives and impact the world around us for your kingdom. In that name above all names, even so the sweet name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we say, Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory, glory to God. Let the glory fall. All is seated on the Baba Sita. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I blow this so far. We call angels come around from all over the nation. And from the four corners of the earth to come in here to Deba Bay area. Because the Lord came to Deba Bay area and threw seven fires from the Spirit of God. The seven spirits of God released to Deba Bay area. It's the Holy Spirit Bay. It's the Cross Bay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm getting the good news for us to let you know. The Lord took me to the White House in the Spirit. And I go with a little car and the president come inside in my car. And his two sons come inside in the back. And the Lord said, go around the mall in Washington, D.C. And I said, Lord, what are you doing? What do you have me doing? And he said, I fill them up with my spirit, says the Lord. He said, we are spirits and have the spirit of God. And it's the beginning, guys. It's the beginning. Healing come to the nation and from here, from America, I'm healing to all the nations in the world. Shalom, shalom.
Shalom Aleha, Shalom Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Healing, healing right now. Healing now. To your hearts, my beautiful people. To your hearts. We pray from the United States Congress, from the Senate. And we pray from the Democratic Party, from the Republican Party. We pray from all the parties because to know Jesus is Lord to all. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The government is on the shoulder of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's who pray today from the government. And who pray from the healing. We want all the hospitals to be empty. No more coronavirus or China virus. Get out of the United States of America. In Jesus' name. As I blow the sofa, angels come out in each hospital in the United States. And this goofy virus come from hell. Get out of America in the name of Jesus. that make up our county. Thank you, Father, for the 16 unincorporated areas that make up this great community. Father, thank you for the nearly 1 million people that call this their home. Tonight, we gather to remind ourselves that all of Pinellas is a gift from you. And as such, we offer thanks. We remember that you, Almighty God, have graciously given your people authority and responsibility over their communities. So we ask that you forgive us for being irresponsible with that authority, for neglecting it, for treating it with contempt, and at times surrendering to the powers of darkness. We repent. We repent, and once again we ask you to place that fresh 
mantle upon us the authority and the responsibility. We willfully and eagerly humble ourselves under your mighty hand that you might exalt us at the proper time for your great name's sake. Father, we ask humbly tonight, forgive the many sins of our community. And once again, extend your gracious mercy towards us all. Father, we need your able intervention against the powers of darkness. We need your abiding presence and your ultimate authority to break the bonds of wickedness. To heal the brokenhearted and to liberate the captives. We need you. So it's with faith-filled expectation that we invite you back into Pinellas County. Father, we thank you for a fresh, life-transforming, healing presence that will sweep again through our workplaces and our churches and our schools and our gathering areas, oh Father, in our neighborhoods and into our very households. Father, we ask for those who are in leadership, some whom we have elected and others whom we have not, but yet they make a huge difference in how our community functions. We pray, God, that you would grant them your spirit of wisdom and discernment and integrity and make it clear to them the right way to make a decision. And Father, may those decisions first and foremost bring honor to your name. And secondly, may they benefit the people of our community. Father, we ask humbly protect our leaders' hearts from corruption. Father, we want to thank you for the many local businesses and the valuable services that they provide. We ask that you bless them. We ask that you restore them as they reopen. Father, thank you for the opportunity of working. And as we work each day, help us to remember that we work for you. May we be inspired to use our gifts, Father, to serve one another out of love and cause the many residents of Pinellas County once again to prosper. Now, Father, we invite you back into our local schools. Bring your presence. Bring your peace. Bring your protection with you. And additionally, God, we ask you for every household in Pinellas. God bless them with your provision, with patience, with wisdom, and with love for their children. May our young ones be well cared for. May we, they no longer experience neglect and usury, abuse or abandonment, whether at home or elsewhere. Instead, Father, may they enjoy their childhood. Father, humbly we ask you to help us fill the gap between this prayer and between present reality. And Father, we lift up those locally who are presently suffering. Oh, compassionate Father, only you know the depths of the burdens that they carry. Some, it's economic. Others, it's medical. Others, it's relational or psychological. Perhaps it's an addiction. But we ask you, come in your might. Come in your power. Reveal yourself to them that they would experience your comfort and your strength and your restoration entering their lives. Grant us wisdom. May we know how to be instruments in your hands for them, whether it be intangible or tangibly. God, thank you for the diverse personalities, passions and giftings and viewpoints that you've placed all around us in our community. We beg you today. We beg you to restore our unity. Father, we're heavily divided currently, but you alone as the Prince of Peace can break down the dividing wall. Teach us to major on those things that we have in common and to be united rather than foolishly cultivating division or discord. Show us the ways of forgiveness. Show us of loving even those who are most against us. How to do it as much as we love ourselves. Father, we thank you for our neighbors. Open our eyes to those who are rejected. Those who are powerless, those who are oppressed or overlooked. Father, you have such great promises if we would shoulder each other's burdens. So let us be a voice for the voiceless. 
Let us stand equally for justice and for righteousness. Thank you for the commanded blessing in this place of restored community. Lord, thank you for the powerful strategic spiritual alliances among our pastors, our shepherds and leaders, and the local influencers of this county. Father, may we bring about your kingdom. Grant us new friendships. May they be marked with humility, perseverance, self-sacrifice, honesty, and holiness. And finally, Father, we pray for the localized believers. May they be utilized and mobilized. Empower us to effectively proclaim the good news to all who are willing to hear. Thank you, God, locally for the ministry of reconciliation. Embolden us. May we humbly speak as your ambassadors. Father, we invite you, make your appeal through us as we urge people to come to God. Send us out. May we be extensions of your grace, your mercy. May we speak life. May we feed the hungry, befriend the lonely. May we find the lost. May we help the hurting. May we go forth as lights, dispelling darkness. Finally, Father, lead individuals and households of our community in discovering your forgiveness, your grace, your salvation, your healing, a new and better life filled with a comforting presence of the Holy Spirit. Father, may a tangible transformation of our community be the result in Jesus. I know there are so many concerns when it comes to our local community and that's a broad perspective but I want to invite you to make a decree in unity as we pray this prayer together it'll go up on the screen just pray with me from your heart tonight Father God we acknowledge that all of Pinellas County belongs to you we invite you back into each municipality in every area of our neighborhoods Collectively, we humble ourselves. We repent for the sins of our community. We ask for your grace and your mercy to be freshly extended once again. Thank you for overcoming the powers of darkness, for loosing the bonds of wickedness. Thank you for healing the brokenhearted and liberating those held captive by the power of sin. We invite you locally to raise up righteous leadership and to root out wickedness as we vote accordingly. We invoke your divine protection over our community. Thank you for giving your angels charge over us and our children. We decree your presence and your peace in our schools and neighborhoods this year. Thank you for your hand of blessing upon local businesses. Cause them to be restored and thrive. We praise you for strategic spiritual alliances that will bring about your kingdom locally. We decree Christ-centered unity, and we gratefully receive your commanded blessing. Heavenly Father, tonight as we humble our hearts before you, we remember... 2,000 years ago, Lord, when you said that in the last days this gospel would be preached in all nations and then the end would come. Lord, we know that when you spoke those words 2,000 years ago, you already had in mind a nation that you would raise up in the last days and that you would gift that nation with freedom. And you would gift that nation with prosperity so that that nation could be used of you to support missionaries all over the world. And that this gospel could be preached in every nation. And then you would come. Lord, we believe we're living in that last century right now. And we believe that America is that nation that you raised up. That you gifted with freedom. And that you gifted with prosperity. And we thank you and praise you. For what you have done. But Lord there are forces. 
that would try to take that freedom away and take that prosperity away from this nation. And we pray against those forces in the name of Jesus. We pray against the spirit of Antichrist in Jesus' name. We pray against the spirit of poverty in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that you, by your mighty hand, will restore the freedom and the prosperity that you had in your heart for this nation when you spoke those words 2,000 years ago. Oh, God, open up the windows of heaven, I pray. And let your glorious spirit bless this nation with freedom and with prosperity that we might feed the world with the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. That we might send missionaries out into the highways and the byways where people are hurting. And I pray, Lord, that you will restore again the economy of this nation. Give our president wisdom. Give our local leaders wisdom, I pray. And I pray, oh God, that you will cause our economy to rise again to that place that you desired it to be 2,000 years ago when you saw this nation. Oh God, we pray this in the name of Jesus. Lord, without resources, we're bankrupt. And I pray for resources that we might do what you've called us to do. That we might win people for you. Lord, we pray for churches to be planted. We pray, Lord, for orphanages to be built. We pray for schools to be built, for Bible colleges to be built. That you'll call our young people out of the streets and call them into the mission field. And we thank you and praise you. And Lord, tonight I pray for everybody in this building right now. Oh, God, I pray that you will release resources resources into our churches, resources into our ministries, resources into our families, resources, Lord, so that we might do more for you than we've ever done before. I pray, Lord, that Pinellas County will be able to do more for you around the world than we've ever done. Bless your people. Bless your people, Lord. Bless them when they go out. Bless them when they come in. Bless them everywhere they go. Bless Blessings, and we thank you and praise you for your blessings. And Lord, we pray for those who have been suffering recently as a result of all this going on. I pray, Lord, that you, by your mighty hand, will raise them up. We pray against the spirit of poverty in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that your blessings will be seen upon your people so that when people look at us, they will see your goodness and they will see your glory and they will see your mighty hand. We thank you and praise you for it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for opening up the windows of heaven. <laughs> thank you for adequate resources so that we can do your will. And this gospel can be preached in every nation before you come. I want to do something right now I feel the Lord has impressed me to do because I believe that God can bless us even in the midst of a storm. We're in a storm right now. But as I read my Bible, I see where God blessed His people even in the midst of great storms. And so I would like to speak over you the words that God gave to Moses to give to Aaron to speak over the children of Israel. That if they would have faith to believe that God would bless them. And if tonight, if you would like to express your faith in the Lord and receive His blessings, even in the midst of this storm that we're in right now, I'd like to invite you to stand to your feet. And I'd like for you to lift both hands up over your head. To express your faith in the Lord. And I want to speak these words. The same words yes. that God gave to Moses. To speak over the children of Israel. And that God would bless them. The Lord bless you 
and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The Lord place his name upon you. The Lord bless your life. If you believe he's going to do it, clap your hands and give God praise right now. And thank you for his blessing in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We receive your blessing. We receive your blessing. hesitated to actually obey God on something so I just want you to bear with me if you'll have a seat for a second I need to tell you a story when I entered the race I was so afraid because I did not have strength and I did not have resources so Every morning, the Lord started singing over me a song. And it gave me courage each day to get up because I couldn't imagine how God would do it. Michael is getting ready to open the atmosphere for families. But I'm gonna trail right behind our pastor and I'm going to sing the song out of obedience because God said it was about America, not just about me. And so if you'll bear with me and allow me this privilege, it would be my honor. Who I am, who I am. Cathedral and listen to the conversation that we are having about him. Amen? Amen. Lord, I want you to bless the families, oh Heavenly Father. Bless the men especially, oh Lord God, because a man who do not spend time with his family is not a real man. He don't have room to grow. And I pray for the woman that will be his backbone the man would be home in the evening to put his children to sleep, to tell them stories. I mean, have a bedtime party. That's what a man should do with his children. He should honor his wife and make her the love of his life. He should make her to know that she's a jewel in his sight, like my wife is a jewel in my sight. And I thank you all for coming today and listen to these prayers for all these wonderful pastors. 
especially Socrates. I love that man. I just met him, but I love him. And thank you for coming, Socrates. If you all would repeat this with me, it'll be up on the screen as well. Oh Lord, you set your disciples to establish the family of God. Now we come to you in prayer, seeking your guidance and care in obeying your call for the families to once again function as a sovereign, divine, and human unity. We know we have failed in protecting our families and teaching them about your love and care. We have a request for your forgiveness. Help us so that we will the love we fear from the rebellious child return home. Did the husband learn how to love his wife? The wife learns how to honor her husband. The prayers set an environment of safety, instructions, and correction. The love of God allowing grace to flow between the generations. We bow our heads in submission to gather in our lands. Help us to restore communication again. Our grace, our music, quality, and to give you glory in doing this. In Jesus' name we pray. something controversial tonight. Amen. Our police. Hallelujah. And uh, I don't know that I ever thought I'd live in a day where it would be controversial to pray for our police. But, uh, but that's kind of the day that we're in. And so join me as we pray together. Father, thank you. Scripture tells us that blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Lord, growing up, we call them cops, citizens of peace. And so, God, we pray that that moniker would again be restored, Lord, to them, that they would be called by our community peacemakers and be called children of God. Lord, we say this because we know that these are your servants for your good and for our good, Lord. God, that's what scripture says, that these that serve in our community as such, God, are, are not only our police, but our military as well. They are God's servants for our good. But if we do wrong, Lord, we should be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. He is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out wrath, God's wrath on the wrongdoer. And so we pray, Lord Jesus, that you'll give us that kind of insight and give this kind of insight to them, that they know that they are your servants today, Father. God, we pray that just justice would be done, Lord, and that it would bring joy to the righteous, even though it may bring terror to evildoers. God, let justice be done again, Lord. God, we remind ourselves that the wicked flee when no one's pursuing, but the righteous are as bold as a lion, God. So, Father, we pray, Lord, let righteousness, God, rise up among our police, Lord, and in our military, Father. God, may we know and may they know, Lord, that you are our refuge and strength, and you are a very present help in time of trouble. God, I pray, Lord, for those that have been hurt or damaged by those that have acted in among our police, Lord, or among the military. They've acted in an ungodly way. And I pray, Jesus, heal the hearts of people that have felt the pain of injustice, God, from those that maybe were supposed to be bringing justice. 
I pray, heal their hearts, God, and give us a spirit of reconciliation, God, in every city here in Pinellas County and all around the Bay Area. God, we pray that the demonic activity that has happened in nations around our world will stop at the Bay Area and not influence us. I pray, God, against that, and I pray for revival, Lord Jesus, among our police. God, while they and their spouses and their children may be feeling anguish, I pray, God, let this be a time that they turn to you, God, and that they find that you are the refuge for their lives and for their families, God. I pray that against those that are righteous, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against them in judgment, that you would condemn it, Lord. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and God, their righteousness is from you, says the Lord. We pray, God, for peace and protection and blessing, God, over all of our police and all of the military tonight. And together, and I'm going to ask you again, if you would, to stand. And I want you to pray along with me this prayer tonight. We intercede together for the police of our communities. We thank God for them and call to mind that they are your ministers as the word of God declares. We pray that they will feel the divine mandate each day as they prepare to serve the people of our city. We pray that the heart of God for righteousness, justice, and lawful order will reside in them. We pray that any who are misguided or have an evil heart will be eliminated from the ranks of this God-ordained calling. We pray that the hearts of all who serve will be encouraged because of our appreciation and support and because of your strong anointing for justice. We pray for their protection as they protect and serve us. Bless them, their spouses and children, with peace and comfort through the Holy Spirit. Prosper their family, finances, and most of all, their spirits to know you as Savior and Lord in Jesus' mighty name. I want you to pray with me for our military as well. And now we intercede for those who serve in our military. We pray that they will have a sense of the magnitude of their call to preserve our freedom and protect our constitutional republic. We pray that they experience the ultimate joy of your salvation and the true freedom only you can give. We pray for their protection against all enemies, foreign or domestic. We pray against the spirit of lawlessness in our world. We pray for blessings of peace and prosperity over their families, finances, and most of all, their spirits. And now surround them as the captain of the Lord's army. Help us and them to remember that conquer we must when our cause it is just. And may this be our motto, in God is our trust. We pray this in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. Amen. You may be seated. Father God, we thank you that you knew that we as individuals serving your cause and your calling could not do it alone. And so you ordain a divine grouping of faithful servants of your purpose. And you call them the church. And tonight, this church meets not cowarding from the challenges of our day or worried about the troubles of our moment, but triumphant in the name of the Lord God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ, by the power of His Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, You have called us to the community. You have called us 
to the inner city. You have called us to the gated house residential area and to the slum where it is fearful to go. For you are Lord of all. And you gave your heart so that all could know. And the church takes this truth to each and every one of them. Now, Lord, we pray for the power of this church. Let your Holy Spirit flow through every pastor, every staff member, every Sunday school teacher and discipleship leader, every worship pastor and musician, Lord, every evangelist and every missionary, let them speak under your unction and allow your word free reign from your church. And Lord, every congregant, may they be in your church with open hearts, open spirits, so when they go through the doors of the building, they never leave the presence of the church. And Lord, that your spirit would go with them into every place and that your name would be lifted high above all others. And your truth through the church will triumph for your cause and your purpose. We pray for unity in the church. We pray that your body worldwide, which is the true church, shall see unity among the differing groups that are part of your church. And through that unity, tear down the troubles, the trials, the challenges of our day and lift up the power of your word to unify, save, empower, heal, and anoint your word flowing from the church. Lord, in you, there is but one culture, but one race, but one people. In you, there is only the church redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and triumphant by the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I pray that your church, of which we tonight are a proud portion, may triumph according to your purpose. I pray it in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And amen. Stand one more time. Pray with me. Oh Lord, our God, thank you for making us servants of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Through grace and the working of your power, you have made us members of your church triumphant and empowered us by your Holy Spirit. Now, we have the opportunity and the assignment to proclaim the unsearchable riches of Christ to every nation, kindred, tribe, and language group. When the enemy tried to stop the proclamation, you put us online, on the world wide web, so that multiplied numbers of people heard the voice of the church in our communities and around the world. When the enemy tried to rob us of fellowship with those of like precious faith, you led us forward triumphant in small groups and home groups, powerful through the Holy Spirit. You, O oh Lord, made plain things hidden in you from ages past. Your purpose was that now, through the church triumphant, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms according to your eternal plan accomplished in Jesus our Lord. Now, in Him and through faith in Him, we will triumph 
in confidence and freedom. She tried potions and for years she just could never get her healing. And then she heard Jesus was coming by. And uh, but there was a big crowd around her. Around him rather. She couldn't get into him. And so, but she was desperate. And of course she, she got on her knees and crawled through that crowd and reached out. And she said, if I could only touch the hem of his garment. And, and then you know the Lord said. Power is going on in me. Somebody touch me. And the disciples were like, well, yeah, somebody touched you. There's a big crowd around you. You're bumping into all kinds of folks here. You know, of course, somebody, what do you mean? We can't identify who, everybody's touching you. Everybody, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about accidentally bumping into me or brushing up against me. I'm saying there is somebody who intentionally touched me. And I know that touch, and I know now that I've touched them because the power of God has gone out for me to them, to that person. And she recognized herself. I'm going to let you know something. So, if you like the Lord, <clears throat> was it revealing to me? That that's the church in America. And uh, <clears throat> we've tried so many things, so many options, and our land continues to be in strife and not healed, even though we have all the prosperity. But I believe God's saying, if we'll be intentional, if we're say, I don't care who gets in front of us, Who's are, you know, who else is just kind of brushing up, itself, you know, up against you? But, but no, we're going to be intentional. We're going to press in and we're going to we're going to touch Jesus and our country is going to have our healing. Amen. We're going to enter in. We're going to. Amen. We're going to humbly get low and get God's attention. No matter what's all going around us and so forth. Because we know, we know, we know, we know that if we could just touch him, he'll touch us and bring that healing. Amen. 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 So first of all, I I, I want to share with you. We're gonna share. We're gonna show a video. This is like a precursor almost to what we have. Fifty day fight coming up. I understand we're in a fight, right? So the Lord laid upon my heart. I just, you know, I just, one day, about when I get before the Lord, I had to say, well, what did you do during that time and all that stuff? And I said, I, you know, I was born on the 4th of July. I said, I got to do something. I got to do something. And I didn't know thing it was, however big or small it's going to be, I just said, but the Lord laid on my heart that we're going to do a 50-day fight. And we're going to get churches to begin to pray and adopt yes. one of those days of those 50 days. And we're going to have a Zoom prayer time every day of those 50 days. Woo. And we're going to pray from September 14th all the way through the election. Amen. And we're going to pray in for, for those who are going to uphold and preserve the principles and values of the, of, of the Judeo-Christians. Right? That has been founded upon. We're going to pray those things in. Yes, yes. And, 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 and in the midst of praying that in, and in the midst of us coming together and seeking God together, we're also going to see the church change. We're going to we're, we're not going to go back to church as normal. The God is shaking and galvanizing and bringing a, a new work in the church. Amen. He's bringing down walls through all this pandemic and so forth. We're seeing the need for the joints and sinews to come together so we can come into the fullness of Christ. Does that make sense? So uh, 
That's what's going to happen. So and God's going to bring that, that revival. He's going to bring that spiritual awakening so that we can bring forth that great last uh, day harvest of souls. Amen. That's what he's going to be doing so that no matter who gets in office, the, the church is going to continue to go forward greater than ever before. Amen. Because the kingdom advancing is independent upon who's on office. Amen? Amen. But we want them both, don't we? Yes. Yeah. And so that's what we're shooting for. Amen. So it's a 50-day fight. Each and every one of you have got something. You can register and be a part of that. We're asking pastors, go back to your pastor if you're not a part of this church. But to adopt, there's things that you can go on and get involved there. So get involved and be a part of the fight. And you can stand before God and say, God, <laughs> I enlisted. I was there. Amen? Man. Like the Apostle Paul. Yes. I fought the good fight. Yes. So we want to encourage you to do that. Be a part of that. And uh, it's, it's gonna, we're going to have other type of unity gatherings during those 50 days. Yes. We're really going to be excited about that. So look forward to that. Get on. You, when you register, we'll be giving you updates and what have you. But we have a short video. I think we're going to play that. That we just kind of put together. So let's watch that. And then... Uh, September 14th, 2020 will be 50 days out from the most important election of our lifetime. The lives of over 300 million Americans will be impacted by our choices. Not only Americans, but also the 7.5 billion people now living on planet Earth. Because America influences the world. You, yes you, are critical to the results of this election. Those who get elected from the presidency down will determine the fate of our nation and the world. This is a battle of good and evil. It's a fight to preserve our freedom to serve our Lord Jesus Christ. This is spiritual warfare at its highest. We are experiencing pandemics, riots, and deception on the highest levels of government. Satan has released his demons. Yes, many people knowing and unknowingly are doing his bidding. This is why we need you to join our 50-day fight prayer campaign. Go to war with us as we pray from September 14th to Election Day. Join the battle at 50dayfight.com. Amen. I encourage you to do that. You know, I want to thank um, Sheila Griffin. I, can, I Listen, I think she penned most of those prayers, I think. I'm, 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 you know, or somebody did anyway. Uh, the pastors did. Okay, wow. That, that, those are great. Uh, reminds me of our 40 days of prayer pastor, you know, Randy. We do with uh, Seek God for the City every year. It's tremendous. But, you know, for someone who's running for the congressional seat in the 13th district to, to take on this is just unbelievable. <laughs> and of course, I just want to honor and thank Pastor Tim and his wife for all their, their generosity and love towards the, our community by opening their doors up. So we thank you so much. And uh, for all of you who come. So we, and, and we want to just like to send you, he's going to close this out. And uh, we just thank you for, for your gift and you brought it here just unconditionally. So we want to thank you for your doing. God bless you all. Thank you. And we're going to let him kind of lead us out and lead us home.
waiting for you to pass by You put your hand over his face So in your presence he wouldn't